history of the grape is a long and extensive one. It is one that dates back as far as the time of the dinosaurs. Scientists believe the Vitus vinifera originated about 65 million years ago. Grapevines, before they were domesticated, grew wild everywhere just as a wild berry bush does today. These wild grapes grew in the canopies of trees from Portugal to Turkmenistan and from the banks of the Rhine to northern Tunisian forests. With grapevines growing over such a wide parameter, it has been hard for scholars and scientists to pinpoint the exact point of origin of grapes. This being said, scientific evidence suggests that the first domestication of grapes occurred in the Middle East. The present-day countries of Georgia and Turkey are known as the primo domestication sites based on the findings of domesticated grape seeds that carbon date back to 8000 BCE. The earliest evidence of wine production was found in Iran at the Haji Peruz Tepe site in northern Zagros Mountains, where the first winemaking is thought to have taken place between 7400 and 7000 BCE. However, four of the six top wine producers today are found in Western Europe. Number one, France, produces the most wine of any country in the world, producing over 1.59 billion gallons of wine per year. Number two, Italy is a close second, producing 1.53 billion gallons of wine each year. Number three on the list of biggest wine producers is Spain, where 863 million gallons of wine is produced each year. Rounding out number four is the United States, where 534 million gallons of wine are produced annually. Argentina and Germany fall in fifth and sixth place, respectively. However, there are many uses for grapes today besides winemaking. Grapes are eaten as fresh fruit, dried fruit, and are also often consumed as fresh grape juice and made into grape juice concentrate. Grapes can be made into distilled liquors, grapeseed oils, and anthocyanin pigments as well. In addition to these items, grapes can also be made into ethanol in a similar process to that of corn. From this point, the spread of the grape around Eurasia and Africa was quite gradual. It was not until 5500 to 5000 BCE when the domesticated grape made its way to Egypt and southern Mesopotamia. During the time of the Roman Empire, from 31 BCE, when Caesar became the first emperor, to 476 CE, when the empire fell, the grape spread like wildfire inland, away from these already established Mediterranean growing places of the time. After the fall of the empire, the Roman Catholic Church played a large role in spreading the fruit into northwest Europe. This was mainly due to the widespread exposure to domesticated grapes as a result of the Crusades. From northwest Europe, the grape was brought in 1492 by Christopher Columbus to the West Indies, where it eventually made its way into North America by way of both European settlers and Native Americans. Though the Vitus vinifera made its way into North America with the European discovery of the New World, there were grapes indigenous to the Americas before the introduction of the Vitus vinifera. In fact, of the eight species that are in the Vitus genus, six of them are native to North America. The two members of the Vitus genus that are not natives to North America are the Vitus vinifera that was previously mentioned and the Vitus amarensis, a native of Asia. Vitus ruparia is considered by many to be the most commercially viable indigenous American species for its use as grafted rootstock and in hybridization with vinifera. On the downside, riparia is known for overly high levels of acidity and strong herbaceous aromas. Riparia's strengths include its vast geographical range and soil adaptation from New England to Montana to Texas, its disease and pest resistance, and its cold hardiness down to negative 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Rootstock is a bare vine that has a healthy root system actively nourished by the soil. A grower will pick a rootstock to suit a specific soil and growing conditions. Once a rootstock is chosen, the grower will decide which grape variety they want to graft onto the rootstock. This fusing of pieces is called a scion. The straight part of the vine that grows vertically out of the ground is called the trunk. The trunk is eventually branches off horizontally into two cordons. Canes become permanent trunk extensions, forming buds and shoots of their own. 
In the springtime, buds will develop on the vine which send off shoots. Shoots act almost like branches, developing leaves and fruit clusters. Clusters are simply a group of developed grapes. The vine canopy consists of shoots, leaves, and fruit collectively. With today's technology, you can grow grapes just about anywhere. Grape vines have become very hardy, able to withstand some extreme climates when it comes to growing conditions. Sunlight and air circulation are key to a successful vineyard setup. When first establishing a vineyard, it is important to avoid areas with a lot of tree growth in large industrial structures. These objects will produce an unwanted amount of shade and discourage grape growth. Too little air circulation and too little light will result in a high amount of disease and fungus, both highly unwanted in a grape production. Terrier is a common word among the wine world. The, world, the word terrier comes from France and it literally means earth or soil. Terrier is a taste characteristic of wine, involving a wine's specific land of origin, including soil type and the region's climate. This is an important factor when selecting a new vineyard location and is especially relevant when comparing new wines with old wines. It is important to have knowledge about the location you plan to grow grapes. The land quality could either make or break your operation. When picking a location for a new vineyard, soil health must be kept in mind. Grape vines do not like sitting in water, so soil must be able to drain well. In addition to water filtration, the soil must have good fertility. Soil needs a sufficient amount of nutrients, enough to ensure fruit development, but not too much which will promote excessive wheat growth. Grape growing is done best on a steep slope. A steep slope will increase water drainage and typically have the correct percentage of organic matter for growing grapes. Depending on your growing region, whether it is warm or cold, you will want a slope direction that will maximize heat and sunlight for your, group, your grape vines. A vineyard trellis system is most often utilized for growing grapes. Systems can be as simple as a single high wire and a cordon system, or as complex as a catch wire system, typically used for table grapes. The key components of a trellis system are posts, a strong post anchoring design, and galvanized steel wire. Strong materials will, will protect a vineyard for years to come. There are various post systems to choose from. It all depends on how much a grower is willing to spend, the land formation, and simply preference. Grape cultivation is still widely done by hand. To ensure fruit quality, producers stick to the labor-intensive way of harvesting, especially for table grapes because consumers do not want damaged fruit. Mechanical cultivation is typically done on large, commercialized vineyards. These vineyards are usually less concerned about blemishing the fruit, which will be crushed anyways during the wine-making process. Mechanical cultivation is actually cheaper in the long run when compared to hand harvesting. The new technology allows for grapes to be harvested in a more timely manner that does not require as much manual labor. Mechanical harvesters use pivotal strikers and trunk shakers to gently shake the ripe fruit from the vine. part of the Vitaceae family, which consists of almost 1,000 species that are grouped into 17 different genuses. Most of these grapes are present in the intertropical regions of the world. In the Vitaceae family, the genus Vatis is the genus of the most agronomic importance. It contains about 60 species that are grown consistently in the northern hemisphere. About 30 of these species are grown in America, and 30 of these species are grown in Asia. The main species that are used are vinifera, 
which is prevalent in Europe, and Labrusca, which is native to Canada and the United States. Many species have been exclusively used for breeding rootstocks and hybrids in the 20th century. Three processes have had a significant impact on the development of cultivated grapevines. Sexual reproduction, vegetative propagation, and somatic mutations. Many new species have been developed over the years by self, cross-pollination, or controlled cross-breeding to try and get a specific trait to come out of two plants. The process of selecting the desired phenotype can be a very long and drawn out one. It takes anywhere from three to five years for a vine to fully mature, plus the time it takes to recover the desired trait, which can take many generations. Once a trait is identified, vegetative propagation, by cuttings, is a method of maintaining and multiplying a highly desirable genotype so that a vineyard can be planted with a single cultivar. These cuttings are also a very common way that growers transport cultivars from one region to another. Many of the cultivars today are maintained by vegetative propagation, which is a process where new organisms arise without seeds or spores and it can occur naturally or be induced by growers and breeders. Although this process should ensure that all of the cuttings produced have the same genotype, Somatic mutation sometimes happens in one cutting and not in another, which will result in a plant in the same cultivar having slightly different genotypes and sometimes even different phenotypes. This is referred to as clonal variation. Many of the different species have been developed over the past several hundred years and are used today. Much of the global production of the grapes are specifically used for making wine. There are 90 different species of grape that are used for making wine. Phytus vinifera is the main family of grapes that is used for the production of wines. This family has a superior quality compared to other grapes for making wine, but they are not very disease resistant. Most common wine grapes in the United States use another family of grape, the Vitis labrusca, that is more hardy and disease resistant as the rootstock for these wine grape plants. These two families are commonly crossed to create a hybrid vine that produces grapes that are both tasty and have great wine quality of vinifera with the toughness and resistance of the Labrusca vines. We classify most wines into two main categories, red and white. Red wines are made with black grapes and white wines are usually made with white or a lighter skin grape. One difference between red and white wines are the tannins. Tannins are found in the grape skins and is transferred into the wines to create a dry puckering sensation in your mouth and in the back of your throat while drinking. Tannins are mostly found in red wines, which explains why most red wines have a dry characteristic. White wine is made purely from the juice of the grape, and they are normally light-colored grapes, and they disregard the pigmented skin and pulp. White wines are known to have somewhere between a sweet and dry taste. Red ones, on the other hand, are made from dark or black grapes, and the reason they have a very dark color is because they use the whole grape, including the skin, throughout the fermentation process, and this allows the, the wine to absorb the color. The fermentation of grapes is brought about due to the natural yeast that grows on grapes. This natural yeast appears as white powder. Natural wine has a maximum alcohol content of 14% to 16%. Anything greater than this will kill the yeast cells. Most winemakers will disinfect grapes with sulfur dioxide in order to kill any bacteria on the skin. Fermentation occurs in two stages. The primary stage lasts for about three to five days and about 70% of fermentation will take place during this time. This stage is also commonly referred to as the aerobic stage since it is exposed to the open air. The secondary stage of fermentation completes the other 30% of fermentation. This stage takes about one to two weeks depending on how much sugar is left in the wine and is anaerobic since it takes place in an airtight vessel. Winemakers will then add certain yeast strains throughout different times during the process. One of the most common yeasts is Saccharomyces. 
As the yeast is at work, the grape juice becomes hot. Large winemakers have stainless steel containers with refrigeration systems. This allows the winemaker to control the temperature of the juice because if the juice becomes too hot, the yeast will no longer work. There are still many winemakers that use a less modern way to ferment the grape juice. They use small oak barrels in a temperature controlled room. This system usually takes longer than the modern way of winemaking. The oak wood also contributes to the wine's flavor, which increases the cost of the wine. The two main types of wine are red wine and white wine. Red wine uses colored grapes with the skin still intact. White wine uses white grapes or red grapes without the skin on them. While making red wine, the skins and pulp will float to the top of the barrel, which provides a perfect breeding ground for bacteria. The winemaker will then pump the skins and pulp back down into the wine to prevent bacteria from growing in it. The two main tastes of wine are dry and sweet wine. In dry wine, almost all the sugar is fermented, while in sweet wine, fermentation is stopped before all the sugar is fermented. About half of the sugar will ferment into wine, while the other half will dissipate into carbon dioxide. When fermentation ceases or the yeast is no longer turning the sugar into alcohol, you are left with wine.